All right, folks, welcome back to a Monday edition of Middays with Q right here on 97.3 ESPN FM. We'll take you up to 2 o'clock. You saw the uh, Mike and the Mad Dog 30 for 30 last week. Great reviews. It was a good show. And on the line, it's always good to catch up with Christopher Mad Dog Russo. And, uh, Doggy, good to touch base. And uh, what were your first uh, What were your first thoughts when you watched the uh, 30 for 30 special for the first time? Well, I watched it April 21st. I had seen it the first time then. And then I saw it again June 4th at two premieres. Rich, so I, I had a feel, but I, I thought they did a tremendous job. Um, I really did. I don't think there's anything. I mean, most of my friends, if any complaint at all, it wasn't long enough. Yep. Yep. Um, but from the standpoint of what they try to capture, how they did it in a 60-minute scenario, 52 minutes to be exact, and I felt the same way. I thought they did a hell of a job. I mean, I, I really do. I, I don't think there was, you know, again, you can quibble here, you can yep. quibble there. I could quibble why Jim Beheim is, you know, in there, not Eddie Coleman. Eddie I C. Shore. Quibble. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I can quibble on those things. But overall, I thought they did a tremendous job. I and, really did. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, too, because I'm wondering, you know, when people look at it, when everyone says, you know, uh, uh, Rousseau and Francesa, they changed uh, the course of Sports Talk Radio. And it's amazing because, listen, everywhere I think everyone has a little Mike and the Mad Dog in them. Uh, and you grow up, and I grew up on you guys in the car with my father after I miss in the morning driving around in, in White Plains and Nyack. So, like I said, you guys were a staple for myself growing up. But there's so many memories you can kind of pinpoint. And I'm just wondering, it's hard to kind of encapsulate that, A, in an hour. And then when you have 19 years with the same partner, I mean, the list of memories goes on and on. It's just, it, it really is. Do you look back and say to yourself, well, if I can pinpoint one, two, or three, these are what it would be, or there's just too many to pinpoint? Well, I mean, I, I mean, there's a couple of things. I, I was a little surprised I didn't use Corey Lytle because we yep. had a big issue with him. I remember that. Two days after they lost to Detroit, and then two days later he has the plane crash. Uh, so I was a little surprised I didn't use that. I was, they could have used that dog day the afternoon, yep. which I thought was significant when they, you know, sent postcards in why they want to have a date with dog, and then he went all went to cats. <laughs> they could have used that. Uh, they could have... Um, you know, that's a couple right there. Maybe there's a little more of a pinpoint on all the games that we went to in 94 when the Rangers and the Knicks both, you know, well, the Rangers won, Knicks got the game seven. Yep. They could have done that. Uh, I mean, I mean, there is a variety of things they could have um, it could have touched on. But again, 52 minutes, uh, that's, that's a very, very short th deal. It's not that long. Um, you could have made it an hour and a half, and then you could have gotten those extra 20, 25 minutes in. Uh, you could have gone to all the World Series that we went to, all the NBA Finals that yep. we went to. Uh, I, you could have picked, uh, you could have delved into a little bit more of the Parcells angle. You could have obviously Pat Riley, Riley especially. We didn't get Riley on. I tried because uh, I thought Riley was very, very important. You could have done something on George Young. Uh, everybody loved the George Young 505 spots. We didn't do anything with that either. So again, for the diehard New York fan like yourself, Rich. You could have done some things that were very interesting, and you could have made it a little bit more New York centric. Yep. Yep. But for the national audience, you know that's why Nance is featured. That's yep. why they gave you the Bayheim soundbite. For the national audience, only being an hour, I think they wanted to make sure that it sold a, sold a little bit from a national span, standpoint and did not become too much New York. So that's the way they handled it from that standpoint. Hey, listen, you had you had the great rant when the Giants. Lost to the Angels. I remember. Well, I they put that in there. That no, they did. The they did. Lost. You could have done that a lot of the, the pink. Giants lost to the yeah. That's when the Giants lost, not to the Angels. The oh, the, oh, the regular rant. Okay. In, yeah, you could have the Pac Man. You could have had the Pac Man Jones rant. You had a Good solo point. rant. Um, you yep. know, I, the I pink Cadillac that. days. You know, you, you brought up the Corey Lytle because I remember you were interviewed afterwards and you say, "Listen." Nobody knows what happens when you say you can't feel bad about criticizing an athlete because no one knows if someone is going to tragically die or in this case get in the helicopter accident, you know, a day or two or a week. That's not how you, you talk sports. You have to have your opinion. And, and it's unfortunate. I think you guys, you know, you were criticized for that, but I don't think rightfully so, to be honest, because you just talk sports and whatever happens after uh, after happens after. Yeah, hundred percent right. Uh, but it did. It was. It was a very unique set it of was. circumstances. Uh, the fact that we had him on. That was a rain out at Shea Mets and the Cardinals on a Wednesday, and he, you know, he, he hits that building on Seventy Second Street. 
you know, at uh, what four or five o'clock yep. in the afternoon, we're live at, uh, at 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 Shea Stadium. So they definitely could have done that again. That's a seven or eight piece, yep. seven or eight minute piece. But they would have had the sound because it was on Yes, because of the fact that uh, that was in two thousand and six. So they could have done that. Uh, you know, they could have done that easy if they wanted to. But I think they would have. Prefer- I think they preferred doing Letterman because everyone knows who Letterman is. Right. So they preferred running, give you those three uh, Letterman pieces of information. Again, I, I think they tried to make it as national as they possibly could, which then would disappoint the New York fans. But, right. you know, they had a very good ending to it. I thought Mike and I gave them good quotes. They got into the Imus thing. Yep. They gave you the history of the station. I mean, they really, from a standpoint of a local radio show, I think they did a hell of a job with that. I really did. All right, a couple more for you because I know we're tight on time again. Uh, Mad Dog Russo joining us. Uh, the Mike and the Mad Go 30 for 30. And, of course, Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. Uh, Mad Dog Unleashed as well. Uh, we'll get into baseball in a second. But, you know, the one thing. Everyone always talks about Sports Talk Radio, and sometimes when you have a partner and, and guys stepping on each other's toes and going back and forth, but it looked like it was the perfect marriage, uh, whether it lasted 5, 10, 15, 20 years, so be it. You know, just if you can kind of encapsulate in 30 seconds, because I got two more quickies for you, what really, yeah, sure. made, it, what really made it work for you guys? Well, I, I, a couple of things. One, we're both Long Islanders. Two, and New Yorkers. Two, uh, we both uh, love sports so much. Three, Mike's a lot funnier than people think. Chris is a lot more knowledgeable than people think. And I think some of the origins of our problems early is trying to prove to Mike that you can match him sports-wise is not easy. Plus, it makes you a little insecure. I'm a kid coming up out of Orlando and Jacksonville. Mike working with Musburger and, you know, running around with CBS with big stories, i.e. Final Fours, i.e. college football, NFL Today. And I'm working radio in Orlando, Florida. And then all of a sudden they throw us together. Well, Mike's going to want to see if his new partner can match him, and I want to prove to Mike that I can, and that's going to cause some issues. So I think that's part of it there. But once Mike realized that he had a worthy foil, I think you saw the show uh, mature. Now, you know, remember, uh, I could prod Mike, Mike could prod me. In a lot of ways, we brought out the best of each other, because how many people can talk sports uh, as, as, uh, as, as in detail as Mike and I can? Uh, the sports that he's not great at would be obviously tennis. Hockey. I can do the sport <laughs> and hockey. I can't do that. But the sport that I'm not great at, horse racing, he can do. Right, so right. you got those two things, and we both can figure out golf, hockey playoffs we can get around, NBA we know, NFL we know, baseball we know. Mike's very good on college football, so he can fill in the gaps there. I mean, you know, from a standpoint of what we did, we gave each other, you know, we filled in the blanks with what the weaknesses of, of each other. Mike can get a little bored. I can fill in the blanks. I I can look at the sports sort of as a fan, a simplistic way. Yep. Mike can, you know, look at it a little more analytically, at least early on. So you put that together and, you know, remember, you had success early. You're on for five hours and before you even turn around, you're getting good ratings. ratings yeah. Yeah, that's going to make you work a little harder to get along with your partner. So you got to keep that in mind, too. I mean, listen, it wore itself out. We were there for 19 years. It was time for a change. I think Mike would admit that now, too. I think we're actually more famous now than we were if I would have stayed with Mike. I'm not sure if there would have been a 30 for 30 if the show had still stayed. The fact that I left it gave it a little soap opera appeal. I kind of bailed after 19 years. And then we had the issue for eight years. We didn't do that much communication. I think that added adds to the story, writes another chapter to it, yeah. actually makes it more appealing. Is he going to come back? Why did Chris leave? They hate each other, this, that, and the other. I think it adds something to it, Rich, so I think that helped, too. All right, two more to, before I let you get out of here. Do you like the direction that Sports Talk Radio has gone? Uh, you know, we, we look at present talk uh, radio, and, you know, now everyone wants that, the hot topic, the debate, the hot take, you know, right away. If you have an opinion, people don't like the opinion. I mean, you got to be passionate. you got to be knowledgeable. You have to have an opinion. But when you look for them, where you guys started and where Sports Talk Radio is right now, I mean, ha- what's your overall assessment of the future of Sports Talk? Well, I mean, there's a lot of people doing it, and some of those folks are looking to do a little bit more guide talk than they are sports talk. I don't know if the accent is as much on the games as it used to be. Uh, you know, Mike and I were always more focused on ball games. Now that I think a lot of people are more focused on the surrounding parts of the games instead of the actual games themselves. 
and I think that hurts sports talk. I like the idea that so many people can do it from a career perspective. It gives people something to do. There's plenty of jobs out there to get, but it also gives people a forum who may have not earned that forum as we've had to do it in all the other the old days. Remember, I worked on radio for about uh, five, six years mm-hmm. in two or three different markets before I ever started FAN. Mike worked at CBS for seven or eight years before he ever started on FAN. Now that apprenticeship isn't as great, they throw you all on and they see if they get a little magic right out of the gate, and that can create a little irresponsibility from a talk show perspective. So that's the negative. You like the fact that there's a million choices. You like the fact that that fans can go a lot of different ways to get information. They can pick and choose. There's a lot of competition, which theoretically would lead to better radio and TV. Yep. So you like that aspect of it. It's not just one show. You got three shows in cities. Well, I don't like this show. I got that show. Well, that show stinks. I got this show. <laughs> you can go back and forth. Right. You couldn't do that in the old days. It was nope. just me and Mike. Yeah. Um, so that so that so that's good and bad. But I, I think overall, uh, the uh, the appetite for sports is on. Un- Unbelievably, uh, it's it, you can't satiate it. You can't satiate it. I mean, yeah. everybody wants to talk about sports. And people know if you're what? faking it too, doggy. They know. They know. They, 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 they know authenticity. That's got something to do with it too, yeah. Rich. You're on top of it. You yeah. know what's going on. All right, listen, I'm not going to uh, get on your giants. I'm just wondering before I let you oh, get out of here. Terrible. Uh, that terrible. Hor- oh, that's horrible. Horrible. I mean, yeah, listen, the, the Dodgers might be the best team games. at baseball, you think, or Houston. Uh, well, it's going to be a good World Series if you get those two. Um, you know, I think the Dodgers have a little bit more of a butterproof process in the postseason because you got Jansen, who's better than Giles, and you have Kershaw, who's better than How about Michael. this kid, Alex Wood? He's undefeated. I gotta see. He's been great, but I got to see him in a big game. But, I mean, I, he's quirky. He's hard to pick up. Uh, you know, he's had some success. I think the Dodgers are a little bit more bulletproof than the Astros are. Um but I think the two teams that would worry you a little bit from where they might be, one would be the Nationals, who yep. are due to win a series. But the bullpen. Now, well, they did add two components yesterday. And the other one, of course, would be the Red Sox, who do have Sale and Price. Right, so, right. Nice matchup. Uh, you, 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 would, you would consider, you know, Sale, if you had Sale and Keichel in game one, uh, even if the game was in Houston, you'd have to favor the Red Sox in that game. And you got to get the price that you got last night against Yankees. Right? That's true, too. He's in and, he hasn't done that in the, and he hasn't done that in the postseason. All right, Doggy, listen, I appreciate it. Uh, the best job, of luck going Richard. forward. All right, uh, we'll talk soon. Uh, best of luck with everything with XM and Mad Dogs uh, Sports Radio Glad as well. Glad you liked it. Glad you liked All the right. 30 for Thank 30, you. Rich. I appreciate it, Doggy. Be well. Okay, buddy. All right, take care of yourself. All right, there you have it, Chris Mad Dog Russo for a couple minutes. Good stuff. Always good to talk a little baseball with him. You know, he said something interesting, too, right? Because everyone looks at the way sports talk radio is, right? And sometimes people... You know the authenticity, right? And sometimes I think people want to dumb it down a little bit. And he said, sometimes it gets a little too old, the guy talk radio. You still want those opinions. You still want those passion. Uh, and you still want that um, uh, that knowledgeable, uh, the take, if you will. But, um, yeah, his Giants are <laughs> they're, they're brutal this year. All right, quickie timeout on a Monday.